Hello and welcome to this video. It's just going to introduce the coastal key terms at key stage three. And I'm going to do it into four sections, erosion, transport, deposit, and sea defense. So let's start with erosion. Erosion meaning the wearing away or wearing down of material. And the first thing, the most obvious thing really is the hydraulic action. Hydraulic meaning liquid action. So the action or the effect that the water has on things, particularly when waves are pounding against rocks and it forces the water into cracks. Okay, the next one we, we're sort of going to be looking at is attrition. Attrition is a bit like rocks that are banging together and breaking bits off, smaller bits of rock. And those smaller bits of rocks become um, used in the process called abrasion. And abrasion is a bit like sandpaper. So all those small bits of rock and sand and grit get washed around by the sea and that wears against the rock. And it also wears those bits of grit and rock down even smaller to the point where they disappear. This is called a solution. It dissolves into the water, much like sugar does in hot water. You, you stir it, the sugar disappears. But it's still there because when you drink the water, you can taste the sugar. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm going to put destructive waves on here. Exactly as the name suggests. The wave is destructive. It causes damage or movement of a material. Okay, let's uh, have a side line, I think. Next one I said was transportation. So the movement of the road eroded material around the coast. So that's moved by waves. It's also moved by tidal currents. Oh, missed an R off. Tidal currents. Now it's worth mentioning here that when we look at tidal currents, we're going to be looking a lot more at tides and we're looking at what high tide is, low tide is, uh, how tides are created by the moon and the sun. Um, Spring tides, neat tides, but I'm not going to write all that down. It's something we'll look at in lesson. Okay, next one associated with transportation is something called a longshore drift. Longshore drift is just literally sand and gravel that moves, drifts along the beach. And there's a process that takes place. Draw a solid line. The next one will be deposit. So the material that's moved from one part of the beach is deposited somewhere else. This takes place because the water loses energy. So reduced energy. Much like we do when we studied rivers. Reduced energy. Uh, gravity is constantly pulling the, the, the sediment to get it down to the bottom. Um, what else? Deposit. Oh, bar. This is a, at the end of a cliff edge. So this is your sea cliff and the currents flowing this way. A sandbar starts to form at the end. So all the sediment, all the bits of grit and rock and gravel and stuff travels along the cliff edge. And as it goes past the edge of the cliff edge, the water loses its energy. Now, it's a bit more complicated because it's to do with currents and eddies and such like, but eventually all the sediment builds up into a big sandbar that sticks off the edge of the cliff line. All right. And then the next thing is something called a spit. Now a spit is its extension of the sandbar as it starts to curve around the shape of the eddy line, which we'll talk more about in class. 
and then we have a salt marsh. Oh, I want a bit of a space there, don't we really? Two different words, salt marsh. And the salt marsh is found in this area here. Eventually it all piles up, the sediment builds up around here, it becomes new land almost and it floods with salt water and then the water goes away and it's all salty so it's called salt marsh. Now there's a couple of things that cross over between these two areas. Obstructions. So if you obstruct the transportation that's going to affect the transportation. And on most sea defences are related to obstruction of something. And then constructive, constructive waves. Now I've put constructive waves there because constructive waves also transport material and they deposit material. So the, it falls in both categories. Just going to rub this off here. And then the last one is out of a sea defence. So sea defence. Now if we weren't living at the coast, we wouldn't need to worry about sea defences. But because we do, it has an impact on us. Um, one of the column, the column that I've missed off the end is how we use the coastline, but we'll talk about that in class. So like tourism and such like. So sea defences can be split into two areas, the hard engineering. So these are things that are built to withstand the sea and the erosion effects of the sea. So groins. These are long wooden, generally long wooden um, barrows that run down the length of the beach from the from the road to the water, and it stops the sand. You know, this is this is the beach. Here's the sea. This is the sand. Uh, and the car parks up here. They generally run perpendicular along the beach to stop the sand from moving along the beach. Okay, they're groins. The sea wall is just a big thick concrete or hard stone wall that breaks up the energy when the waves come in they pound the wall and stop the flooding of the town. And revetments. These um, are either love them or hate them. These are generally on a slope that are angled defence so the wave comes and washes up them. Quite often you'll see them as steps, sometimes you'll see them as um, slopes with gaps in between each step. Uh, sometimes they're angled so the water washes off and the sediment falls behind them. But we'll, we'll, again, we'll look more at them in class. Okay, beyond. I love that word. But basically it's a, it's, it's a mesh basket. I just thought it was what they used in building motorways and stuff. It's a mash basket full of rocks. I don't know why I've drawn that picture, but just a mash basket full of rocks. And it's generally going to use to absorb energy from waves, particularly in storms, to protect soft embankments and armour blocks. These are just concrete blocks. Not always blocks these days. Sometimes they're, they're a three-pointed prong or triangle shape. They come in different shapes these days. And they're just piled up around the coastline. So when the waves come in, they wear the concrete rather than the coastline. Um, the other category that we need to look at when it's sea defences is called soft engineering. And that's things like beach nourishment. And beach nourishment is basically drag the sand back out the sea, up the beach. 
shoreline. Vegetation and June. We're talking about sand dunes there, not sand dune stabilization. It stops the sand from blowing away when it's drying. But when there's a storm, sand dunes generally get battered and change shapes, particularly after a long winter of storms. And storms can also affect the spit and the bars as well. Um, right, managed retreat. And sat back. Sat back's quite, quite a new one to me really. It's nothing I've never thought about until recently. It's where we build the houses and stuff away from the coastline. So they sat back from the coastline. So any wear or flooding has happened before you get to the houses. Um, and basically that is what we're going to be studying when we're looking at coast. Um, I hope that helps. If you uh, want to use some of your downtime to have a look at some of these key terms, I would recommend you have a look at the sea defences um, and see how it relates. And if you can work out how these affect each one of these so how would a seawall affect be affected by hydraulic action anyway we'll catch up in class hope it's out i'll see you soon